Hey everybody, what is encryption in electronic banking and electronic payments? Really, what is encryption? Why do I even have to have it? Where does it even say I have to have it? And who says I must have it? If you're ready to find out the answer to all those questions, then stay tuned. What is encryption? Encryption, well, that's the process of hiding information to ensure that it's only readable or read by its intended recipient. It's nothing new. In fact, encryption is something that has been used for centuries to be able to protect messages and information exchanged between people. Some of the earliest cases of encryption, they go back to Julius Caesar back in 100 BC. He was actually known to use a form of encryption to be able to convey secret messages to his army generals on the war front. And speaking of war and encryption, you may have heard of the Enigma machine. It was invented at the end of World War I and was heavily used by German forces during the Second World War. And my favorite, do you remember the secret decoder pin that was used in A Christmas Story? Where Ralphie, you know, he gets his little orphan Annie secret society decoder pin. And he gets on the radio and he starts listening to this message and he's going through frantically decoding the message as it's listed over the airways for everybody to hear. But only those with the secret decoder ring were able to get the message. Drink more Ovaltine. <gasps> I let the secret out. Oh, that's just an example of having a coded or encrypted message. If you didn't have the little orphan Andy decoder pin, you couldn't decode the message. But let's fast forward to today the information age, where we're all connected from just about any phone or keyboard to just about anywhere in the world. And now the importance of encryption to be able to secure information that is exchanged across any electronic means, well, it is definitely intensified. Encryption is important. Encryption is also a requirement for compliance with a growing number of data protection and privacy regulations. In fact, this requirement for encryption can be found in state privacy laws, HIPAA, PCI, GLBA, and Sarbanes-Oxley. But that's not all, there's other places as well. See, I would ask, do you understand the role that encryption plays in the security of payments in the ACH network and how it protects data when it's in different states, which could be in transit or maybe in storage or, or even in use? It's going to be a requirement so let's go ahead and let's head over and see what the ACH rules say. Now, what do those ACH rules say? This is gonna be according to our NACHA Operating Rules book. And if you wanna be able to read along, well, I'll put it on screen for you, but you can also go to where section 1.7, which is titled Secure Transmission of ACH Information via Unsecured Electronic Networks. This is the operating rules. You definitely wanna be able to adhere to these. Are you ready? Let's start the read along. Banking information related to an entry that is transmitted via an unsecured electronic network must at all times from the point of data entry and through the transmission of such banking information be either encrypted or transmitted via a secure session. In either case, using a technology that provides a commercially reasonable level of security that complies with applicable regulatory requirements. Banking information includes any entry, routing number, account number, PIN, or other identification symbol. This section applies to transmission between a receiver and an originator, an originator and an ODFI, an ODFI and an ACH operator, an ACH operator and an RDFI, and an originator ODFI, RDFI, or ACH operator, and a third-party service provider. Transmissions of banking information over an unsecured electronic network by means of voice or keypad inputs from a wireline or wireless telephone to a live operator or voice response unit are not subject to this section. Okay, let's, let's, let's quit quoting the rules verbatim here, and let's go ahead and figure out what does this all mean, because what does it mean to you and why do you care? Well, it's time for the Payments Professor's Rules Breakdown. See, the way it works is for all ACH transactions, 
And that's gonna be any of them that involve the exchange or the transmission of banking information. And that's any information, so it's any of these, which could be the actual transaction, the entry. It could be the data that's associated with the entry, like, you know, things like routing numbers or the account numbers. And the rule even mentioned PIN numbers but it's also any other identification or any personal information that's related to the individual involved or businesses involved in that transmission. So if it's gonna be transmitted via an unsecured electronic network like the internet, yeah, that is an unsecured electronic network, well then the rules require that the information is either, first of all, encrypted using a commercially reasonable secure security technology that complies with current applicable regulatory guidelines, or that it's transmitted via a secure session that utilizes a commercially reasonable security technology that also complies with current applicable regulatory guidelines. In other words, if you send this data, if you send this information in any format, which could be in the ACH file, could also be via fax, could be in emails. If it's in any format that you're in control of, then it has to be encrypted or sent via secure session. Now secure session, that's basically like a protected connection that no one can access. I think of it as an encrypted road that only certain, let's say cars know how to get on and travel. But what level and what type of encryption must be in place? That's a very common question. And that's a question that when it comes to the answer, we used to have a specific answer. The rules used to even say specifically this type of encryption, but it's not defined anymore, at least not specifically defined. See, the rules say, because it's constantly changing, that you gotta use a commercially reasonable standard. Well, what's that? Well, that means that you, your software providers, your IT people, anybody who's helping you to have access to the ACH network or to protect this data, need to be aware of and compliant with the most current standards for encryption when accessing a secure internet session. See, technology is steadily changing, steadily advancing, causing the commercially reasonable standard to change as well. So what's that mean if a new standard becomes available and makes the other one obsolete? Well, then participants should comply with the new standard. Again, you gotta make sure that you're meeting this rule, meeting this regulation. And then the question always comes up, well, professor, are there any exceptions to this? <laughs> There's always some type of exception, but when I'm asked this, I always respond with this. Start by assuming you are not the exception. I hate to be that way about it, but I always tell people it's best to assume you're not the exception and to make sure you follow the rule. And according to the rules, when it comes to exceptions, here we go. The transmission of that banking information over an unsecured electronic network, again, over the internet, by means of voice or keypad inputs. Now this is voice or keypad from a wired or wireless telephone to a live operator or a VRU, voice response unit. Well, then they're not subject to the data security requirement, but there's always a but too, right? But an application where the originator obtains information from the receiver by any other means, which also could be by a phone, and then he enters that information via the internet is going to be subject to these data security requirements. Again, I would protect all the data and assume like, hey, it's gonna be required, okay? This data, once it's entered, it's in your system. Wherever it gets entered, it's in your system and it must be protected. Again, it's always best to assume you're not the exception. It is always also considered a sound business practice to have all your data at any point encrypted in your ACH files, in your emails, when it's stored on your network, and anywhere else at any time you have any information related to the transactions or the people involved in the transactions, any of their data, even businesses too. Also, know what level and what standard of encryption is in use. Well, why do I need to know that? Because your auditors are gonna ask you. That's why. Whether you're a business or a bank or a credit union, you need to know what level of encryption you have in place. Now, if you want to make sure you don't ever miss any of our future videos, then why don't you head over to our YouTube channel for Payments Professor. And while you're there, make sure to hit that subscribe button. 
You can also go over to the paymentsprofessor.com website where we have full courses broken into short videos just like this to be able to help professionals like you succeed in the world of electronic payments. Now, if there's a topic, a subject, something you'd like to have addressed by the payments professor, you can leave a comment on YouTube, send a message on LinkedIn, or you can email me directly, kevin at paymentsprofessor.com. We create exceptional education that is entertaining, engaging, and fun. Class dismissed.